Now that the spring football season is officially in the books, I still have some concerns about this Penn State team. And despite what social media thinks, no, Drew Aller isn't one of them. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I imagine that a lot of you saw that viral video of all of Drew Aller's incompletions from the blue-white game. And I guess that's justification to completely write him off and this Penn State team going into 2024. That's at least according to social media, not here on this show. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day where you're free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Let me know down in the comments section your thoughts as far as biggest concerns, biggest issues remaining to be addressed by this Penn State team going into 2024. I am eager to hear your thoughts. I'm going to share my overall. So I have positive takeaways. These are the negative ones that are still lingering after the blue-white game. I do want to start with Drew Aller because Drew Aller is not the issue. Aller is not the issue. Returning starter, third-year quarterback within the program, Drew Aller Yes, did not exactly have a perfect day in that blue white game, but we're going to address that along with the viral video of all of his incompletions. He went 15 of 32 in a very windy spring game. I think it's when you, when I think about this from time to time, the fact that if you put Drew Aller in another offense compared to last year, right? So let's take Washington's prolific offense. The Huskies were very good, quarterback by Michael Penix. You put Drew Aller in that same system. With Kalen DeBoer, Ryan Grubb, those wide receivers, that offensive line, and he is a Heisman contender just as much as Michael Penix is. Coaching, play calling, and who you're throwing to matters. It most certainly matters. And Aller's is as talented as they come. That there's no denying that that Aller is was a five star quarterback for a reason. Twenty. A, Given the circumstances of 2023, 25 touchdowns to two interceptions is very impressive. Not a lot of quarterbacks would be able to do that. But when your wide receivers struggle to get open, you're told to protect the football because you have a number one defense in Penn State. Did Penn State had the best defense in all of college football. You have a number one defense to back you up, so don't make any mistakes. That's what Drew was being told to do on offense. And your former OC is a mediocre play caller at best. That is the result you're going to get. A lackluster offense that leads you to a 10-2 and two season and 10-2, and two, but let's not forget who they lost to, the eventual national champion and Ohio State, which was one game away from getting to the college football playoff itself since there were only four spots, right? That is the result you get. So, But you also can't say, oh, well, Penn State was a distant 10-2 and two team. No. They only lost to Michigan and Ohio State in the regular season. I know about Ole Miss in the Peach Bowl, but uh, don't forget how many starters were missing from that game uh, who opted out and uh, injuries too. But as I mentioned, Aller is as talented as they come, and this is a response to the viral video about Aller's incompletions from the spring game. This was a quote from the article that was written associated with it. The Penn State passing offense looked absolutely abysmal on Saturday. In the spring game, even if they were fighting through some significant wind gusts at times. I'm glad he just brushed that off. Uh, Drew Aller spent much of the day looking lost, forcing throws, missing short and long left and right. He finished 15 of 32 for 202 yards and a touchdown. But even that 6.31 yards per attempt mark tells too optimistic of a story. Explain what those significant wind gusts were. There was a weather advisory in effect. There were wind gusts over 50 miles an hour for most of the afternoon. The offense is also brand new. It's very vanilla. And any football, former football player will tell you this. I heard Landon Tangwall say the exact same thing. It is easier to install a new defense than it is to install a new offense. So I'm going to take the opinion of a, a, a former football player and one that played at Penn State, which the writer does mention that, yes, the Andy Kotelnicki is new and the offense is still taking shape. He still didn't think it was a good enough reason to let Aller's performance slide or at least let the mistakes slide. Let's take it one step further now. Keandre Lambert-Smith wasn't there. 
Julian Fleming was on the blue team. Everybody else, all the other starters were on the white team. But your top two supposed wide receivers, aside from Trey Wallace, were not on the same team as Drew Aller. No Nicholas Singleton, no Catron Allen played in this game, and the offensive line was a little banged up. So under all of that, under those circumstances, those conditions, 15 of 32 for 202 yards and a touchdown and no turnovers in a weather advisory is a pretty good day in my opinion. However, I do agree. I do agree. Yes, I do agree with the writer. Yeah, criticism, give praise where praise is due. Also give criticism where criticism is due. This isn't directly about Drew Aller, though. One of my remaining concerns is the downfield passing attack, not the passing attack overall. I think it's going to be better. Total Nicky's there, right? You bring in Julian Fleming. These are these are going to make these additions will make the offense much better. But the downfield passing attack, Fleming's not a downfield threat. He's not. He's going to be a blocking wide receiver and a possession wide receiver. Okay? Yonder Lambert Smith is officially in the transfer portal. Trey Wallace has to stay healthy. Is somebody like Amari Evans ready to go? Liam Clifford's not a downfield threat. What about Caden Saunders, right? Kent State, that's the concern. They're working on it, though. Look where the progress is. There were six plays, six passing plays of 15 yards or more. That's at least a step in the right direction. With the windy conditions, I, I will take that. Six plays of 15 plus or more yards. James Franklin always talks about the explosive plays. An explosive play is specifically a 20-yard play, but I will take chunk plays of 15 yards from the passing game on a day where there are 50-mile-an-hour wins. That itself is a win. But unless the downfield passing game improves, Penn State will see a similar product in 2024, even with Andy Kotelnicki and any of the other upgrades that they have brought in. That's just the fact of the matter. You have to get defenses to respect your downfield passing attack, or you're going to get a lot of the same. And it doesn't matter who the offensive coordinator is. Now, what about some of the other concerns from Penn State? Well, there, there are a few position groups that need some attention here. Yes, wide receiver is one of them, but I have two others that need some attention as well. I'm going to discuss that on the other side of this break. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. We've all been there, either as a player or as a fan. It's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure if you or your team can pull out a win, then that's when you dig deep. Lift your head up and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heists, and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right, the smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone, anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. You can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards, make your friends go bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball, and charge other players rent for your most iconic properties. You can even work with your friends, so not just against them. You can work with them and open community chests and tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put your game face on, and download Monopoly Go today. That's Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play. Wide receiver, offensive line, linebacker are my biggest remaining concerns as far as position groups, though. I'll explain why in just a moment here, but I do want to tell you first about Locked On's NFL Mock Draft Live on April 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern Time streaming on the Locked On Sports Today streaming channel on YouTube and now on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Find the ultimate six-episode series on April 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern time to hear who the local Locked On experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft on April 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern time, streaming live on Locked On Sports Today's streaming channel and on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Now back to the three position groups that Penn State still has at least question marks, glaring concerns compared to everybody else on the roster. Wide receiver, I don't think this needs too much of an explanation because we've been talking about it for so long. I am under the impression that Penn State absolutely needs to go into the transfer portal and get another wide receiver. Specifically, Penn State needs a speed threat. 
Penn State has a lot of possession guys, but what? No home run hitters. None. The, the KJ Hamler, Jahan Dotson, players that can stretch the field. I can name a couple of them for you. Well, at least one of them for you. Amari Evans and maybe Carmelo Taylor, but those guys aren't experienced. Those guys aren't proven. I would say Amari Evans is closer, but when is he going to take that next step? We haven't heard little to nothing about Amari Evans. You just lost KLS to the transfer portal, and he's definitely not withdrawing. So now you not only have to replace a projected starter, a fifth-year veteran within the program, and you still don't have that home run threat that can expand that downfield passing attack. Uh, my expectation is that more wide receivers will, in fact, enter the transfer portal in this case. And if you are way over the scholarship limit, what are the chances that you are going to be able to land another significant upgrade here if you're Penn State? So if Penn State plans to go get another comparable component to Trey Wallace, Julian Fleming, to give you a good base, a good trio of three starting wide receivers, that's not going to be easy in this age of NI in this age of NIL but also with the fact of they're over the scholarship limit. We've already discussed this. Check out some previous episodes about how Penn State is going to see somewhere 10, 12, maybe even 15 more players enter the transfer portal unless they can figure something out. But they got to get to that 85 scholarship limit. And per the athletic, they're at 99 or 99. That's 14. That's a lot. But NIL, maybe you can do some creative things. We'll see. But a lot of double digit players are probably going to enter the transfer portal here. That's my point. But you need another quality wide receiver and i and i think you need a speed demon i think you need a track star not another possession type of wide receiver somebody that can stretch the field and, and make safeties have to work and protect center field so that they don't get beat over the top offensive line's another one and honestly that might be a bigger concern than wide receiver because again you did get julian fleming trey wallace can be can be a number one in this offense and you have a lot of talent but Nobody that is standing out above the rest. But when it comes to offensive line, they were banged up in the spring game. However, at the end of the spring game, it made me a lot more pessimistic than they did off optimistic given those reports. Now, I gave props to the scout team defense. Hey, the scout team defense had a day, but should they have really been that good? Should the backups have really had four sacks, six tackles for losses against the starters? Against the starters. Probably not, which means I'm concerned, and you should be too. The starters gave up way too many pressures, even when Drew Aller wasn't getting sacked, even when Bo Perbula, you know, sacked, right, because the quarterbacks weren't allowed to get hit. Too many pressures on whoever was back there, whether it was Drew Aller or Bo Perbula. So unless the backup defensive line is really that good, the offensive line, the starters, are a problem. You lost three multi-year starters from a season ago on an offensive line that was slightly above average they weren't great they they weren't and the product was there you you know you see it with the stats the result olu fashionu one of the players that you're replacing is a future and in just a matter of a couple of weeks we've been talking about it for a long time olu fashionu you have to replace him as the blind side at left tackle to protect drew aller then hunter norzad who was a multi-year starter and then caden wallace who was a multi-year starter those were all competent quality. You lost the best elements of your offensive line from a season ago. Jamie Nelson and Sal Wormley return, which is an okay start. Banga Yuane factored, factored into some time. But Drew Shelton was banged up through the spring season, right? We didn't really see a lot of Anthony Donko after that impressive Peach Bowl performance, you know, with respect to him. So who is going to step up and replace all of them? I like J.B. Nelson a lot. I think he's the best offensive lineman on this team. Nick Dawkins is a very capable veteran, and I fully expect him to start at the center spot. Anthony Donko has come on strong. I think Anthony Donko is set up to have the best or the most likely spot of a breakout candidate on offensive line. Cooper Cousins should play right away. But will any of these guys perform at a day one or day two prospect level when it comes to the NFL draft? Probably not. So we, we talked about wide receiver being full of just a bunch of guys who won't separate themselves from the pack. I absolutely think that standard, that same standard should apply to this Penn State offensive line, and that's not good. The last position group, linebacker. That's, that's a concern to me simply because there is not a proven star. Curtis Jacobs moves on to the NFL draft. Abdul Carter moves down to defensive end. I'm glad he's still on defense, but you're also taking him from that linebacking core. 
can Tony Rojas really take that big of a jump to replace? They wouldn't make this decision. This is a calculated decision. So I, I'm guess I'm leaning towards the intuition of the coaches that yes, Tony Rojas, because my starting three, based on what we've seen, would be Tony Rojas at that Abdul Carter spot, Kobe King, and then Dom DeLuca at that strong outside linebacker spot. But that is a lot of responsibility on Rojas to take that next step as a first-year starter and somewhat replicate what Abdul Carter has done in just two years' time. Kobe King can be that star, the star linebacker of the group at the mic spot, but who else? Again, I don't know that Rojas is going to meet that bar in his first season. Dom DeLuca, we know what he is. He has his lane. He's very good against the run, but he has other limitations on the defense. And then after that, there's still a lot of question marks because who else is capable of stepping up and performing even as a backup here? I've heard you know, positive comments about Keon Wiley, Tamir Robinson. That's just not enough for me. And I know Tyler Elsden is still there, but he's received more criticism than he has praise. So yes, Penn State is still in fact linebacker you, but this season, I think there's going to be some growing pains early in the season. Guys like Tony Rojas, second half of the season, will show out, but that first six or seven games, just be careful that the linebacker unit isn't exactly a liability in this case. Unfortunately, Penn State, the stronger, the, the tougher half of the schedule is that second half, but those are the biggest position groups that still have the biggest question marks, biggest concerns going into the 2024 season. I do want to finish on a positive note. How about the bright spots of this Penn State roster? Above all else, what are the best position groups going into the 2024 season? One of them is the defensive end room. We're going to discuss that more coming up after the break. Today's episode is also brought to you by Yahoo Finance. When it comes to your financial future, you think you've done it all. You've saved, you've researched, you've invested all that you can. Now you need to take those investments to the next level by using what every financial great uses, Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for a little extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and the data you need all in one place. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspective, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. With a community of over 90 million users each month, that's right, 90 million, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That is yahoofinance.com. The pass defense is certainly not going to miss a beat under Tom Allen. Let me promise you that. Before we get to that discussion, remember, if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Join the discussion in the comments section and leave a like on this episode if you enjoy these conversations. And in this final segment, the brightest spots of this Penn State group going into 2024 and the strengths of what will propel this team to a college football playoff berth. I know it's 12 teams, but this group can get to the college football playoff and frankly win an opening round. I don't think they'll be in the top four and get that by, but they will win enough. They will be in a position to win a first round game and get into the second round and you know let the, let the cards fall where they may, right? But I'll begin with the pass rush here. The defensive line is loaded. That, that's And that's an understatement. I've already discussed it, how the defensive ends with Abdul Carter, Amin Vanover, Deny Dennis Sutton, Zariah Fisher, Smith Vilbert comes back, the emergence of Jameel Lyons. Penn State truly what James Franklin likes to have, six capable defensive ends at that spot. There is, there is little drop-off as you go down the depth chart from Abdul Carter and Deny Dennis Sutton to then Amin Vanover and Zariah Fisher to Smith Vilbert and Jameel Lyons. That is a very good group. And the defensive line as a whole, with the return of Devon Ellis, Hakeem Beam, and Zane Durant still there. They just have so much depth. They recruited all those freshman defensive tackles, Liam Andrews, just to name one of them, right? This, this defense will have one of the best run defenses in the country. Again, I am fully expecting a top five run defense, and they can contend to lead the conference in sacks. Again, I know Penn State led the nation in sacks, but they will be up there in terms of pass rush presence as well. 
especially with what we saw from Abdul Carter in that spring game. That first step is as quick as they come. And then that's where the pass defense as a whole. There's the pass rush. Then there's the pass secondary. The secondary loaded at safety. Jalen Reed, KJ Winston can be one of the best dynamic duos in the conference in all of the country. KJ Winston is a future first round pick. Jalen Reed is severely underrated. Then factor in the emergence of Zach he Wheatley, former turnover king. Really saw it, had a turnover in the spring game, right? Received due praise from James Franklin, unprovoked praise uh, about Wheatley. So you are loaded at the safety spot and three capable contributors, and all three of them will play on the football field. Penn State will just play three more three safety sets. But then you go to cornerback. I know I've expressed some concerns about the depth because of the depth, if there is an injury, yeah, that's not that's not going to bode well. You have to anticipate that those things can happen. But A.J. Harris projects to be one hell of a pickup out of the transfer portal. Definitely has the capabilities to be that number one cornerback on an island. Then you have Cam Miller and Jalen Kimber as those co-starters at the number two spot. Again, cornerback to the cornerback spot, just because they're too deep at each spot, I would like to see them, if they can, if possible, get another depth piece at cornerback specifically. But you have Odavian Collins, you have King Mack, plenty of talent, plenty of potential. Overall, this secondary is well-rounded with plenty of talent. Just see if you can get one more player to boost the depth. Then there's the running back room. Arguably one of the best in the conference and, and the nation, too. The only other school is that one from Ohio. Because they have Quinshawn Judkins and they were somehow able to return Travion Henderson. But that, that's what I mean. Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen are in that same conversation as Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins. Those are your two dynamic duo superstars right there as co-starters. But then in Penn State's case, Cam Wallace and Quentin Martin add another element where like Katron Allen dealing with bumps and bruises through the spring, you can feel comfortable that if Cam Wallace needs to take 10 to 15 touches or same with Quentin Martin. And don't forget about London Montgomery and the incoming freshman and Corey Smith. This is another group where you have the two superstars as co-starters, right? Like the safeties, like the safeties, KJ Winston, alongside Jalen Reed, Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen. It, it's tough for me to figure out which group is better. Of the three, you have the running backs, you have the safeties, and you have the defensive ends. Which group is the best of them? Uh, that's really tough. To it, Hey, it's good to have that problem of a 1A, 1B, 1C for this Penn State roster. And then the last group, tight end. Tyler Warren is going to set Penn State stat records for the tight end position. Single season, career, Tyler Warren will break records as a Penn State tight end. Andrew Rapplier is emerging as a breakout candidate in his second year with the Nittany Lions. You have Khalil Dinkins, you have Jerry Cross, and oh yeah, you have that five-star tight end prospect, Luke Reynolds, that just committed to the Nittany Lions and, in, in, and enrolled early. And don't forget about Joey Schlaffer. Schlaffer took that red shirt to add some weight. He was a top 10 tight end in the class of 2023 in terms of the high school rankings. Andy Kotel, Nicky, loves to incorporate, he's a tight ends guy, he loves to incorporate tight ends significantly into his offense. This is another group that has nothing but pure, pure skill and depth, and those are the brightest spots for this Penn State football team going into 2024. The transfer portal is officially open. It is here at the time of the posting of this episode, Tuesday, April 16th. Any and every Penn State player that goes into the portal will get a reaction and an impact of what their departure means, and any player that is linked potentially to join Penn State. Well, we're going to discuss all of it as it happens right here on Locked On Nittany Line. Once again, thanks for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. If you enjoy these conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams, subscribe to the YouTube channel and wherever you get your podcasts. Leave a like. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section and share this episode with friends and family. And don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it is available on, the Am on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. You can find Locked On Sports Today now available on YouTube 24-7, also available on the free Fire TV channels app.